Please be reminded that the Prince George's County Public School Administrative Procedures regarding appropriate use of technology, social media, and email continue to apply to our online instruction. In addition, this session may not be recorded without the instructor's consent. The description of the applicable procedures is provided online in the Student's Rights Responsibility Handbook. Thank you for your cooperation. This is sent on behalf of Charles Herbert Flowers High School Administration. Well, hi there. Here we are. I believe this is week five of distance learning lessons. And I was just sitting here. One of the things I've been doing since I've been home was just eating all the time. And I have this delicious looking Peeps marshmallow. And I was looking at it and you know, this guy reminds me of the totem pose that I saw when I went to Alaska. And I guess in your mind, you're probably wondering, well, why in the world would that remind Mrs. Gaskins of a totem pole? Well, in Alaska, they have these totem poles and I'm just gonna get dressed for the part right here. I'm gonna put on my little hat and my little blankie because I wanna feel the part of this assignment. So here we are, totem poles. They um, are made out of specialty wood the totem poles um, typically are carved out of cedar wood. Cedar wood doesn't rot and they can create these beautiful images in the shapes of animals, birds, and it tells a story. So I just happened to have this um, tube. And while I'm explaining to you about the totem pole, I'm just gonna kind of make a little makeshift totem pole with tape. Now this is not the project that you're gonna be making. I just wanna be doing a little something while you guys are listening. The word totem comes from a kinship group and it means family clan. And it's family clan because it tells a story about each family member in the clan. So for instance, if you chose an owl the owl would be for grandma, who is very wise. She's a leader in the family, and she's a very wise individual. What if you um, did a symbol of a bear in your work? Then it would mean that your dad is very smart and very strong, just like a bear. Other images could be a fox. A fox could be representative of your mom because she is very clever. Other examples could be um, your dog because he is very faithful and he runs around. So anyway, I'm really just playing around with images for what a real live totem pole would look like because all of these images have been carved and even though they don't look like the family members, they are made in the image of. But moving along, today we are going to create a different type of totem pole. Totem poles are really tall. They are so tall that um, they're probably the height of a street lamp, very tall. The traditional colors are that they are black, red, and white, and sometimes blue and green being the main colors. Um, what else? They have, um, when they were originally carving these totem poles, they could use seashells or bones or even beaver teeth. Remember the other day when I was outside, I discovered um, some carvings that was done by the beaver. So it would take them anywhere from three to nine months to create a totem pole because of all the carving that went into it. Now, the first week of distance learning, we um, did an assignment called the coat of arms. And in the coat of arms, it might remind you of the representation of what different families 
have in their um, designs. So you can represent things from an indigenous family, a clan, the first nation, the aboriginal native families, the original inhabitants. All of this can symbolize your family or your group somehow in your production. So let's get started. In this assignment, the first thing you want to make sure that you have is tape. You want to make sure you have some pencils. You're definitely going to need some scissors. You're probably going to need some color pencils. And the one color pencil that stands out the most in this project is going to be the white. And later on, you'll see why. And then you're going to need two pieces of paper that are the same size. Now, this paper, I am going to fold it in half to get started. Both pieces of paper, the same size, and then they'll both be folded in half. All right, let's get started. Let me get this out of my way. And you're going to have to do some cursive handwriting. So the first thing you want to do is to get your first paper and you are going to draw your name so that it fits on the fold. This is the fold of your paper. Now we all know that my name is Jacqueline and I've already pre-written it on here. And then my middle name is Denise. Now you can pick either name. I just demonstrated both names. That one doesn't show up too well. But it says Denise. I'm going to go back to Jacqueline because she's nice and dark. All right. So you can see that Jacqueline hits on the... Actually, when you double line it, after you do your cursive, you have to double line it. Okay? And you're going to make sure that it hits the fold line. All right? And you see how you've written the name first and then you double line it so it's nice and fat and that that double line hits the fold. When you are finished with that, you're going to cut out all the negative space. So here, I have already cut out the name Denise. Now, do not cut the fold because at some point in time, you're gonna have to open it up. It will not open up if you have cut through the fold. I mean, some areas, yes, you will cut. That's how you get these little holes here. Let me open it back up. That's how you got these little holes. But then right here, the cut is here, not there. Here, not there. Hopefully this makes sense to you. So when I open it up, I don't want the side that I wrote on. I want to turn it to the clean side where there's no writing. Okay, and then I'm going to mount it on my second piece of paper. So that's why I was saying you needed two different pieces of paper, two different colors. So the colored paper, if you don't have any, you can use your color pencils and color the paper and then do your cutting and drawing on it and cut it out and mount it on your white paper. So here we have the opened up name and it's mounted on a piece of paper that was the same size so it will fit. Once it is completed, the next thing that you'll do is you'll go in there with some marks to fill in the negative space with your white color pencil. Now what if you had another color that you wanted to use? That would be perfectly fine as long as it stood out. And these are just different ones. I'm showing you at this time different patterns that went into the negative space. And this is my final sample example. All right. Take a look. All the negative space has textures, implied lines that have been created inside the negative space. It's a relatively simple project. I think that you will have fun with it once you get everything mounted. Now, if you have glue, add that to your supply list for this week because tape might not be as neat looking. And that's this week's project. 
All right, guys. So this week we're making a two-dimensional totem pole. Nothing that you have to carve, nothing that's terribly complicated. And all of that came from a memory that I had when I went to Alaska and discovered all the beautiful totem poles that had been carved by hand by the native people there. If you have any questions this week, join me on Friday from 12 noon to one o'clock to discuss anything. And I know that we're moving towards the middle of the quarter. Some of you may wanna start talking about your grades. So <clears throat> if you have some questions about that, feel free to pop in during office hours. I will be there waiting to, to um, answer any questions or concerns that you have. So anyway, I'm gonna take my little siesta at this time and rest up after doing this wonderful demonstration for you. All right, so guys, take care and enjoy this. Our seniors are gone now, so no senior should be completing this assignment. Not unless you just wanna have fun and have something to do while you're still at home. I don't mind, I'll take a look at it or you can just do it just for fun. But whatever the case may be, guys, have fun making your totem pole.